uh, here is my repo. You can check the exercise you want to check by yourself later in charters. And then in every chapter, you, you will see a quarto document. That's, that's the sort file to see this. This is exercise. So let's start with this. So the first one is describe a new hypothesis to which the p-value given the table uh, 3.4 correspond. Explain what conclusions you can draw based on the p-values. Your explanation should be phrased in terms of the sales, TV, radio, and newspaper rather than the terms of the coefficients of the linear model. So the new, the new hypothesis for all coefficients is that they are uh, really close to zero. If we go to the book and check, and check the p-value for each category, we see that the TV, the p-value is really below to the 0 0.05. So the coefficient based on the variation of the data is really far away of zero. The same for radio, uh, but newspaper, no, that's not the case. So the p-value is really high. And we don't have enough information, uh, uh, enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis for the newspaper. Two, carefully explain the difference between the key and, and classifier and the key and regression methods. The classifying inside classes based on the most often class of the closest key key elements. On the other hand, the reaction is image, each values taking the mean and the, the closest key elements. So the classifiers take the mode of the elements and the regression take the mean. That's the main difference. Suppose we have a data set with five predictors to predict the salary, salary after graduation in terms of dollars. And after using these squares, we feed the next model. We and I summarize the model in, the, in this table. Which answer is correct and why? And based on the information, you can see that for a fixed value of UK, UK and JK, college, college grades earn more on average than high school grade. So highest, uh, high school students earn uh, 50 college, uh, uh, college students earns. Uh, so why I'm explaining is that the baseline is high school students. So um, college students, that is the next, the next class, uh, we need to, to zoom this coefficient. So in total, the coefficient would be uh, 85. Predictory of the college rate with EQ 110 and, J, and JPI of four. So then we use the regression, the coefficients, and we can calculate the value. So we start with the intercept. And then we add the other elements. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think here is a, a typing mistake, yeah. Because it should be 50 instead of 35. True or false? Since the coefficient for the G, GPA or Q intersection terms are very small, there is a very little evidence then the interaction effect. Uh, yeah, 
we cannot conclude a significant level based on the coefficients. So the, the answer is no. We cannot make a conclusion about the significance of any term about che checking the standard error without checking the standard error of each term. The equation might be small because the Q is very high values if we contrast with the JPI. So for example, the EQ values are really close to 10,000, no, 100, and the JP, JPA values is the highest value is four. So for that reason, we can see a very low coefficient here in contrast to the JPA ones. But it's, we cannot conclude that it's not significant because the is based on the standard error of each coefficient. Four. Uh, I call it a cell data of 100 observations containing a single predictor and a quantitative response. Then, feed the linear regression model to the data as well as a separate cubic regression. Suppose the true relationship between J, X, and Y, for example, to be linear, consider the residual sums for the linear regression and also the training uh, residual sum squares for the cubic regression. Would we expect to be lower than the other? Would we expect them to be the same? Or there is no enough information to tell? Justify. Uh, as the training sum of a square always gets lower as we increase flexibility. So a mother with the third degree has more flexibility with well, just one term. Uh, Will be, yeah, yeah, that, that, that will be a space. And we cannot conclude anything about the training one. Answer the test and the, okay. But in the case of the test, a uh, residual error, the linear regression will have lower uh, test residual error as it reduces the square bias of the model. So because we, we suppose that uh, the true relationship is this one. Suppose that the true relationship between S and Y is nonlinear, but we don't know how far is from the linear. Consider the training residual error the, of the for the linear regression and also the training a uh, for the cubic regression would we expect one to be lower than other would we expect to be one so yeah as the training rate always gets lower as we increase uh, flexibility the cubic regression would have the lower one in the training and for the for the test one, the cubic regression will have a lower one. It reduces the square bias of the model. I don't know. And in this case, I think it's a problem. If the relationship is non-linear, yes, the the test, the test residual error of the, the cubic regression will be higher as it was a modeling overfitting. It was overfitting the, the, the data. So consider the field values that result from performing an integration without an intercept. In this setting, the field value takes the form. So it's the same, but it's, the, the B value 
the coefficients have a different meaning as we won't have an intercept. It's a, basically a line that starts in the origin of the uh, Cartesian plane. And we need to show that we can write the question in this form. So we start just uh, making equals both parts and substituting the coefficient by the definition that they, they gave us. Then we can extract uh, the g value and and just to, from this part, and just to equal and, and cancel it both part. Using the 3.4 argument, that in the case of simple regression, mean regression, there is a square line always passes through the point. Yeah, so we need to check if this line, uh, ah, no, no, the, no, 3.4. I think the, the, the 3.4 of the book. So uh, when we fit a linear regression, we expect that the, the point crosses a, uh, no, I think I, I, I miss wrong. I did this part wrong. So I, it should be U, the Y, not the S. So it would be the average for both the predictor and the response. So to make this, we just need to take the basic function and then to substitute the intercept part. And as we can see, this part will cancel and we will see that it, for average S, we will have average Y. That's the, the, a simple demonstration. So the point is that the intercept definition, the intercepts is who makes that this property happen. So I don't know, I don't know if you have any questions or a different answer so far. Um, I didn't quite get uh, a part in the exercise five. Uh, mm -hmm. When you, uh, in the in the third line, why is it that we can like split into the sum in the left to the sum over a, a y times the sum over the y y uh, and that to be equal to the sum of the product of a y and y i yeah i think the point is like and just explain this this multiplication. So I keep this part and also sum in this part. So in this way, it gets this form. You, the book doesn't explain why they grow this comma here. And, and I don't know either, but that's the best answer that I found. So you can divide and cancel both parts. That why comes from the definition of the B coefficient. Um, good, with that. Uh, and in the next exercise, uh, number six, uh, are we using the fact in the first line, are we using the fact that we want to prove are we using it in the actual proof because we are replacing uh, the coefficient, well, the estimated coefficient beta sub zero mm -hmm. via the value that 
we expect it to be, right? We expect it to be the one that makes the, the regression line contain the point uh, X mean, Y mean. Exactly, yeah. The point is the definition of the intercept. That's okay. why, yeah, the regression line always cross from the mean of S and the mean of Y. So the coefficient made the adjustment to make that possible. Okay, thanks. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the apply exercise. This question involves to use simple linear regression on the auto data set. Use LM function to perform a simple linear regression with P MPG yeah, as the response of the host power of the predictor. Use the summary function to bring the results and comment on the output. So yeah, we have we load the package of the book and perform a simple linear regression because. Simple means in this book just to have one, one predictor. And the other data set, and yeah, then we get the summary. So we can see that the regression is strong. So as we can see, regression p value much of is much lower than 0 0.05. And we can reject the null hypothesis to conclude that there is a strong relationship between the response and the predictor. The coefficient of host power is negative. So we know that the predictor increase, as the predictor increase, the response decrease. And that may be the, the main conclusion here. So as if we have a more power car, it's less efficient. That, 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 that's the conclusion also. What is the predicted merge per gallon associated with the host power of 98? What are the associated 95% coefficient prediction intervals? Confidence prediction intervals. So in the book, we can see, here's the, the simple way to do it. So we need to, place the model that we already trained here and pass new data. So 98 would be the new data inside of that data frame. And then select as an interval the coefficient. When we don't specify the interval word, uh, what the prediction function does is just give us the fit value. But as we ask, for the confidence, uh, we get these two extra values. And so the confidence interval is have a lower range than the prediction one, because for in the co confidence one, we just need, we just want to know where is the average of the of the prediction. So we know that the average for the cars with medians of half horsepower, we expect that the average between these two values. But if we want to make a prediction from a particular car, not for the average of all cars, we need to use the prediction one and you will have a wider range. So, plot the response and the predictor. Use a line function to display the least square regression line. So, here we can see the host power versus the mesh per gallon in the y axis. And we can use the Abel line based on the model that we already trained. And we can see that, yeah, the linear, the, the, the regression is really negative, it's really clear even without the line, but it doesn't seem to be linear. So use plot and see the diagnostic plot that we can see the same here in the diagnostic plot that we don't, 
we, we are lost in linearity, as we can see the Q in the residual versus field values. And also the almost elasticity is grown. Yeah, if we go back to the response, yeah. The R square is a little bit low, 60. So making prediction with this relationship is no, it's not really good. We, we, we could find better way to make predictions. And so then we 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 can use pairs uh, to see all the possible uh, plots, scar plots in a matrix. There is a really good package to make that also using gplot2, that is ggGallery. Uh, but for these answers, I just uh, try to use as much base R as I could. <laughs> so computing the matrix of the correlations between the variables using the function score, you will need to exclude the name variable, which is qualitative. So yeah, we can use the auto and then to use the negative to remove name using subset function of base R, and then we could calculate the correlation matrix. So yeah, the correlation, the core function we can use it uh, with matrix, numeric matrix, and also data frames where all the values are numeric. Uh, use LM function to perform a multiple linear regression with the mesh per gallon as response of all other variables except the name as a predictor. Use the summary to print resource, comment the output, for instance. So this is the, the syntax to write what they, they do. So if I want all the variables, I just need to write a point. So mesh per gallon, tilde, point, and then minus uh, and name. So that's the variable that we don't want to include in the model. Then we can uh, have the summary and print it. Um, and they made me questions. Is the relation p value below, as the relation p value is below 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Here we can see the relation p value. We can reject the non hypothesis and conclude that the least square one of the predictor have a relationship uh, with the response. So we we know that the in general the regression it, it has a relationship with the predictor. Which predictors appears to have a statistical significant relationship with the response? So to make that, we can use the summary that we already say, extract the co coefficient matrix, transform it to make it as a day frame, and use use to set that is the same. In this case, to set works exactly like filters of tidyverse. So we, we, we take the variable and say, oh, below uh, our threshold value, so here we can see all the significant variables, like displacement, a way, year, and origin. Origin year would be. What does the coefficient for the year variable su suggest? It suggests that the car on in average can drive 0 0.75. Here we can see the, the value. More miles per gallon every year. So every year, the cars are a little bit more efficient on average. Use plot 
function to produce a diagnostic plus of the linear regression fit comment on any problem you see with the fit. Uh, do the residual plus suggest any on usually large outliers? Does the leverage points identify any observation with usually high leverage? So checking the diagnostic plots, we can see that nonlinearity of the response predict the relationship. Yeah, because we expect that all these values be uh, like dispersed and not making this form like a like a pike, I think. Yeah. Uh, no constant variance. We can see a low variance right here. And as the value increases, as the fitted values increases, also the variance increases. So there is no constant variance. And uh, there is also high leverage points, high leverage. We can see, we can see in this side, the 14 is higher level, but we didn't see any outlier. So we have a really wide uh, value in the response. I know you have any questions so far? Or we can continue. Yeah, no questions for me. Okay, great. And uh, I also had uh, to make that part also in, in the repo. I, I, I think I didn't send the chat. I thought I did, but I think I didn't. So yeah, here's the, the repo. Uh, I wrote a summary related to the possible problems. I know it's the general linear regression. You know, it has model linear regression, possible problems. And so every time I need to check the problems, I try to, to refer to this table. I, yeah, I, and I summarize the detection method and the solution. So I don't know if it's useful, so I share it, whatever. And now the next question is use the star and the two point symbols to fit linear regression models with interaction effects. Do any interaction appear to be significant? So let's see, I first, create functions to, to remove the row names. So I go to, I take the auto and take all the columns names and take apart the mains per gallon and name variables because we just, I just want to see the predictors, not the response. And we cannot use name to, to make creation because it's like an ID. And then I use all these names and I try to make a, like a combination. It's like I'm making all possible combination for two values. So it's like, I'm, I'm trying to make the, the linear function just with the second level of combinations. So when you pass to the base pipeline to this function, you can use the S twice and also use paste to combine both. Let me, no, okay, let's continue. And then, I use the plus for combining every position. You know, I, I, let me try to run it here just to show you how it works. I think I need to load the the package. Yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, this package.
yeah, here we are. So we have all the names, then remove the variables, then we get all the combinations. So there are many. And then we use coll a collapse of paste to create just one, one element with all the functions. And then we use the a paste and we use mesh per gallon, tilde, and all these predictors. Uh, we can do it because our half a function is as a formula. So if you take these values to as formula, so inside of the mm function, it do it use this function to make the string describing the, the, the formula, a real formula that the, the, the model can use. So, uh, so you, want, you need to create linear models with many predictors. It's good you to know that you can use a string to make the combinations as I did here. Then I extract the summary, then I extract the coefficient of matrix, in this, and here I use the remove row names. And I just take a, a, took the, the significant values and the year one. That, that was the process to get this table where all the predictors are significant. And unless the year, because it have a p-value higher than our expected value. Uh, one question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what does it mean in the line base zero MPG uh, uh, Corby wave? What does it mean the predictors equals underscore? Uh, okay, yeah. Let me explain you here, yeah. The point is like how it works the pipe in base R. So when we use the magic that we use in the print, because with the print, let me check if I have a yeah, string R. So it's like the point, uh, let me just load that package. Is it like the dot X or? It's like the point. It's like, um, okay. let me load the plea to show you. Um, deploy, okay, here. So instead of this underscore, you need to put a point. And page doesn't have any argument. So it just, uh, the first argument just points. There is no, uh, there is no any argument called like predictors. But as I need an argument to pass at the second element, because I need, I want to paste first this part and then all the predictors, I need to put it in that position. That's like a trick that I use to, to make that possible because uh, because I want first this value and then this value. So it pays ignores that argument. It would be base R, the, uh, excuse me, the peer and use the this pipe. I think you don't need to specify an argument to use to use it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm, in, okay, in the same, it's the same solution. Yeah, both as the base pipe works. 
I need to pass the underscore to a element. So I invented to pass it and, and jump the and jump the, the problem. Yeah, of course I need to, to use the, the base pipe. I know you you're clear with this, so Oh, oh, I need me to explain a little bit better. Yeah, yeah I think I got it uh, when you mentioned that it works like the dot. Exactly. Yeah, but the, the dot doesn't need any argument, but in base R, yeah, I need to have an argument to, to pass and just the first one. That, that's the only point. And try a few different transformations of the variables, such as love, uh, square root, um, elevated twice, comment on the, your findings. So yeah, uh, they want me to make so many transformations. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I just, instead of making all the transformation one per one, uh, I wrote this function. So in, in using that function, I could, I could make a list of all the functions to apply to the S value and get just a single result. So let's explain you the function. And I start transforming the data frame to a data table. And then for all the variables to transform, then list is here. Ah, uh, no, transformation bars. I think I did them. Um, uh, where are you using? I mean, L, L apply. Uh, here, I just some from these variables: displacement, host power, weight, acceleration. So for all these variables, I applied this function. It's like to make a um, mutate across in the plane. So this line is really like that. It's like, hey, I want to mutate across all these variables and apply this function. And then I remove some bars I like and apply the, the linear model and just get the summary of the, the values. And also get the summary of each variable. So at the end, I start with the original, the, the adjustment square, right? The sigma and the p-value. So we start with 0 0.81, applying the log, we get a little bit higher, 3% higher. Uh, with the square root, we get a, uh, 2% higher and with taking, making the taking, I don't know how to say this. Elevating, I think the the X value, we get lower to a bit lower. So maybe this is the, the summary of this. I don't know you, yeah. I maybe the the syntax is no like, but that's the the way that I, I would prefer to to make this transformation. Just to create a list of functions and applying all the functions using and apply. So yeah, the conclusion is just that the best information is log. It makes it a little bit better, but no like. 
changing the, the conclusions. So in my, in the, maybe in the real world it doesn't make even, even say made the transformation just with, with this change. This question should be answered using the car, car set, car set data set. Fit a multiple regression model to predict the say using price urban in US. So yeah, we have the model here. We get the summary and we print the summary. So yeah, price is significant. The regression, no, we always need to check first. The regression is significant. And just the urban, yes. Urban yes and urban no is, is the same. No, doesn't have a really a strong relationship. Provide interaction of e coefficient model. Be careful, some of the variables the model are qualitative. Yeah, we use the same variables just with, with the star to get all the possible uh, combinations. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it includes even worse. Yeah. It's less things are significant now. And yeah, and the R square is it's almost the same. So it also doesn't doesn't make doesn't afford value to, to make that that complex the model. Write the model equation form. Be careful, be careful to have uh, the quality variables properly. And yeah, to make this, yeah, this is the the duration. And I wrote this this function to to write that. Using a lot of yeah, so based for which operators can you reject the, the new hypothesis? Yes, yeah, just for the price in the model and the interactions. And on base of your response to the previous question, if you have a small model that only uses the predictors for which the evidence has shared with the outcome. So in this case, just is the price. How well do the model A and the R fit with the data? F fits better the data against the 0.2 of the model A, E, the model E. Uh, using the model E, obtain a 95 confident intervals of the coefficient. Yeah, we need to use the confine function with the model and the level of confidence that we need to use. And here we get the confident interval for the, as we can see, it doesn't cross here for that reason is significant. Yeah. Evidence. Is there evidence of high leverage in a model E? You know, there is there is a leverage point. I insist that this is a leverage point. Let me check the notes. So they say here that the coloniality leverage, complete leverage is fine, rather than the leverage values are between n. So in the number of predictors plus one between the number of observations. Hmm. It seems that the model doesn't show 
Like it's a leverage point, but yeah, I, I conclude that is one of this, like, this is weird. Is this problem? Yeah, we investigate that the statistic for the null hypothesis in the linear regression we have an intercept. To begin, we generate a predictor X and respond as, as follows. So, yeah, they start using a normal distribution and then making this function and adding some a little bit of noise. And we save this data in the simulated data. Perform a simple linear regression of y and onto x. We are interested. Report the coefficient estimate, the standard error coefficient estimate, and the state and p value associated with the new hypothesis. Comment these results. You can perform a regression with an intercept using the comma. Yeah, using, using the that way. And we got the summary. You see that X is also significant. And we get a really high I square. So it was defined 70, 78% of the variability and the relation is significant. Now perform a simple linear regression. Ah, oh, yeah, I think the conclusion are here. As we can see below, we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that Y increases 1.99 for each unit of S, explaining 78% of the variability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we can see below, we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that S increases uh, 0. 39 for each unit of Y, explaining 78% of variability. What is the relationship between the results obtained in A and B? A can explain Y as well as S can explain Y. So yeah, the point is that we are getting the same R square for both, for both results. So they can explain each other in the same. It's like, uh, this is a really good point to explain that the linear model doesn't explain causation, causation, causation it's just correlations. The same correlation that we see between uh, Y and X is the same, it doesn't matter which other one you prefer as a predictor of the response. In R, show that when regression is performed with and intercept the test statistics is the same in the regression of y onto s as is for the regression s onto y. And we can see below the test statistics of uh, the first coefficient the for both regression is the same value. Uh, here is the, the test statistic. So yeah, they refer to the test statistic because it's a way that we can measure a uh, while both is more significant than the other. Because sometimes the p-value gets really low, but the t statistic value is easier to see in those cases to compare. And this will involve simple linear regression with an uh, intercept. Because that the coefficient statement for beta for the linear regression of y onto s, we have the intercept given by the 3.838 on the y circumstance. Is the coefficient estimate for the regression of s onto y the same as the coefficient estimate of the regression of y onto s? The relation would be different between 
Yeah, they, they, they just asked if the coefficient would be the same. It cannot be the same. Generate an example in R with 100 observations, uh, which the coefficient estimate of the reaction S on the Y is different from the coefficient estimate of the A on the S. So here we can see the we first generate a, um, the, the response value, the, the predictor value, set 100 observation with the mean of A and a standard deviation of four. Uh, of course, setting a seed first just to, to always get the same values. Uh, we are using some simulations. Then, we add the, the response value, making this function. And then we can plot. Then we can get the summary. This is the coefficient of S of the Y and the, the other one. Yeah, we, we, get, we got that point. They are both different. So, and now we need to perform another simulation where both have the same, the same body, the, the same coefficient. So in this case, I'm getting the, the same X, but in this case, um, instead of adding a mean, the mean, the, the R norm function, the standard is zero. So it just, it just, I'm, I'm, I'm just making X, adding a little bit of noise to X. That, that's why I'm here, here, doing here. So to get the same coefficient, basically you're saying that we have the same variable twice. And we, and we really need to add noise to, to make the linear regression worse. Otherwise, you will have a, an error. So and let's make the, the comprobation here. We can see 0 0.99 and 0 0.99. So yeah, we got it. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, you have one question because we are running out of time right now. So I think we won't we won't have time to to get the the last three last three questions. Do you have any doubt in the chat? Or you want instead of continue watching a little bit to finish this chapter? What do you think? Oh, great. Perfect, yeah. You, you have the link to the repo and you can um, it, use the data table documentation. They, ha they have a really good introduction. Um, you have any questions, you are free to ask me any using my content. Uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.